Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. My name is Elavaris, and welcome to the Battle for Wesnoth. The Battle for Wesnoth is a turn-based, hex-based strategy game released in 2003 and continually updated to this day by a passionate group of developers. The game itself is free. You can find it on Steam or download it from their official website. Uh, there's no microtransactions in the game at all. It's a very, um, it's a very, very cool game set in a fantasy universe. Think uh, Lord of the Rings. Um, think Warhammer. That sort of thing. It's got really gorgeous pixel art, and I've been playing it for off and on for about six or seven years. Um, if you haven't seen my last Let's Play series, I would recommend taking a look at that, especially if you are new to the game and want a good understanding of how things work. I'm not going to be giving a in-depth breakdown of how all the basics work here. If you want to see that breakdown, then I would recommend looking at my last Let's Play series that focused on the campaign in Orcish Incursion, a rookie level 7 scenario, pretty short campaign. Um, but today, even I guess even if you um, are new to the game, you could still watch this. I'm just not going to give as in-depth breakdowns, but you'll probably get a decent understanding just by looking at it. But again, uh, if you really do want that in-depth understanding, you could either play it yourself and go through the tutorial, or you could watch my last Let's Play series. But without further ado, we are going to hop into a second Let's Play series where I'm going to be playing Descent into Darkness, an intermediate level campaign. We're going to be playing on the challenging difficulty, the second uh, difficulty tier. So let's get some quick backstory. The northern frontier town of Parthen is annually raided by neighboring tribes of orcs. Malin Kesher, an outcast mage, seeks to defend his home and wreak vengeance on the orcs by any means necessary, even if it means sacrificing his own soul in the process. Right, we're going to be playing on challenging difficulty, as I said. All right. Malin Kesher was born ten years after the death of Huldrych IV. He grew up in the northern border town of Parthen, the second child and eldest son of the city's baron. Every summer, by the time the mountainous paths and high passes shed their wintry gowns of snow, Orcs descended from the northern hills to ravage the settlements at the frontier. Every year, Malin's father led the townsfolk to repel the raids and force the orcs to retreat back to the north. When Malin was ten, a passing mage sent strong magical abilities in the boy and suggested he be sent to the Isle of Alduin for training in the magical arts. Malin studied there for eight years, learning all manner of magic, from basic control over the elements, to the mystic arcs and scrying, to alchemy and symbol medicine. Although his life on Alduin was luxurious and peaceful, Malin found the teachings of the scholarly mages to be too philosophical for his tastes. His thoughts turned back to Parthen, where brute force, not theoretical reasoning, was necessary to drive off the orcs. In time, Malin began to research new magics on his own, but his lack of experience led to a series of failed experiments, one of which took the life of a fellow student. For his transgressions, he was expelled. When Malin returned to Parthen, orcs had already begun to attack the city. Although he tried his best to fight them off, the raids were far more relentless and the town guard far weaker than he had remembered. One night, a particularly powerful strike stormed the city and Malin could only watch as his father was cut down by one of the savage orcish warriors. Shaken by the loss of their commander, the human defense began to falter. The orcs roared in anticipation of victory, but before they could overrun the city, skeleton warriors poured out of the woods to their rear. The undead cut down orc after orc, swords and axes hacking through flesh and bone with ruthless efficiency. The soldiers watched in half amazement, half fear as the orcs dropped and the skeletons turned toward them, empty eyes bleeding with fetid magic. All was dreadfully still as the blood and carnage settled in the rank darkness. The silence was broken by the irregular shuffle of a man emerging from the trees. He stood before them, a hunched figure with a rasping voice reminiscent of crackling bones. I am Dark and Volk. While I know you do not love my kind, I think it is vital that we put aside our differences for the moment. The orcish menace grows in the north, and they will soon return in even greater force. You cannot hope to defend against them without my help. For now, however, I ask only to refresh myself in your town. Drogon, the captain of the guard, replied, Nay, you surely know that the penalty for necromancy is death. Seeing that you have saved our village, however, we will allow you to rest here for a few days. Nevertheless, upon your departure, you are banished from Parthen. Should you return, we will attack you on sight. 
Malin, troubled by his father's death and the strength of the orcish assault, argued to no avail that Dark and Vol could be allowed to stay. After a couple days, the necromancer left Parthen without incident. And here we are at Porth Parthen in Saving Parthen, the first scenario. Was it really a good idea to send out a raiding party so soon after the orcs just attacked us? Even Father is no longer here. Nor is Dark and Volk. We are truly defenseless. Not like we needed him. I cannot believe that you would even consider trusting a necromancer. Quit bickering, you two. With the bulk of their forces massacred in that assault, the orcish encampments will be greatly weakened. The raiding party should be able to clear them out and leave us a relatively quiet summer. So much for quiet, Drogon. Orcs amass north of the river. What? Curses! How can there still be so many of them? You sent most of our soldiers away to attack the orcs, and we haven't even begun to rebuild the city walls. Quiet, you. Malin, you must hold the river fort, or they shall surely overrun the town. If you can defend for two days, the raiding party should return by then, and we will be able to fight the orcs off. For now, I will bring what soldiers remain to your aid. So we can either just defend the river fort for two nights, which is 13 turns, or kill the orcish leader, if possible. Defeat is if orc orcs reach the outskirts of Parthen, or the death of the three important characters. And I believe this counts as the outskirts of Parthen here. So... Let's get a bearing on our surroundings here, or get our bearings, rather. Uh, we have our allied commander here is going to be sending troops to the river fort. This scenario, or I guess this campaign, was like overhauled in 1.14.7. I'm on 1.14.11. Um, so yeah, it was, it was quite drastically overhauled, it looks like. This first scenario looks way, way different and way, way better. Much more interesting than it used to. It used to be basically just like two flat planes on either side, and that was it. But this has so much more character, I really like it. These two settlements are going to be big, big, big for our uh, defense. Having that 60% defense is going to be very, very useful, and we are very likely going to need it. Going to get some reinforcements from Drogon here. Does not look like he has much money. I know we did just steal a village of his, but... Yeah, now the only thing we can actually recruit are walking corpses, and I believe as soon as we do, he's going to be like, hey, what the heck is that? You know, you can't. You're not allowed to be a necromancer. And he's going to, like, kick us out after the end of the scenario. I have done this without, um, without spawning any walking corpses, and it's still basically the same thing. You just argue that at the end, you're like, hey, we should go see the necromancer, and then he's like, no, and then you leave anyways. Uh, so, alright, so I think we can hold off on recruiting walking corpses for now. We don't really need them. Rather just save our gold if we can for the next uh, scenario. Sending out the wolf riders. That guy is the big problem. Ideally, we'd like to get some uh, experience on our leader. Okay, so Orcish Crossbowmen not quite pushing in. Because I believe these units do not follow us. So let's see. Let's just recruit some walking corpses. Okay, here we go. What in the blazes is that thing? Has the necromancer returned? His timing could not be worse. No, Drogon. I raised this corpse with the skills Dark and Volt taught me before he left. While I have no love for it, we cannot hope to, the, to repel the orbs, orcs without the help of the dead. You say it will ensure our survival, but at what price? Defiling the bodies of our dead? Your soul sold to black magic? What? I am hardly evil, Drogon. You say that, brother, but you have been very close-mouthed about why the mages sent you home from Alduin. I am beginning to think that you were already dabbling in this witchcraft even before you met that necromancer. No, no, it was something stupid, something silly. It does not matter now. I will not stand by and allow the orcs to destroy my home while I have the skills to prevent it. So yeah, I believe they're going to basically just kick us out after this scenario. I want to get... Uh, uh, Malin close to the front lines here, just so that um, he can swoop in and get some XP where available. Um, in our past campaign in Orcish Incursion, he was only level, like our leader was level 2, so he's already really strong. In most campaigns, our leader will not be level 2 by default. Um, so that's why I want to uh, start getting our leader some XP here, as he's only level 1 and does not have very strong attacks. And as such, he's pretty susceptible. Now, if these guys die, it's not a huge deal, because as I said, um, 
uh, sorry, because as I said, uh, these units do not go with us in the next scenarios. They're basically like, oh, necromancy, we won't stand by and allow that to happen, and they refuse to go with us. So, alright, so ideally, we would like to get him the kill. Uh, I don't know the best way of making that to happen, making that happen, because we do sacrifice this good defense, and do open ourselves up to some damage here. Now, if he gets three, we're in really good shape. The likelihood of him hitting three is not very high. Now, our zombies, of course, cannot move very far, because they're just zombies can't ask too much of them. I think we'll just go in for this. Hopefully we don't die. And we did absolutely nothing with that. Great news. Uh, green could... Well, actually, I don't think green will steal that kill. Hopefully. I think we'll just put our leader here so that green can't swoop in and steal the kill because I do really want this kill on my lord. There's no way he kills us. Uh, we'll, we can't kill him, but we'll get him very low if he attacks us. This book, by the way, it just doesn't it doesn't really do anything. I can send a leader down there um, later on to show you guys. I thought that book would do something, like, pretty cool. It doesn't really. Alright, so now Green's going to mount their counterattack. Alright, they're going to get a good hit in there. Walking dead are... Walking corpses are... Um, of course, chaotic, as you would imagine, they get attack bonuses in the night. So, 7-2, if he hits that, he just dies. The odds of this guy getting the kill are relatively low. Nice, perfect, perfect, perfect. We'll just go in for the kill there with Malin. This guy needs to get back, we'll send some walking corpses forward. So we don't care if our walking corpses die, or really these guys die, but just for the sake of the defense. We'll put him there to heal for one turn. Maybe move him farther south and this guy to heal. This guy is definitely going to die this turn. Not a big deal, though. Yeah, there he goes. Normally, you'd be like, hey, loyal units. But as I said, these guys don't come with us, so it doesn't really matter. The uh, wolf rider's coming down. Doing quite a bit of damage here. Might need to fall back to our fort, recruit some more walking corpses. Although we do still have green here, and he's going to take advantage of this defensive position. Smart move by green. And he's actually recruiting uh, woodsmen and peasants now. <clears throat> it looks like he's fallen upon hard times. Alright, now the cool thing about uh, walking corpses is that if you kill someone with it, it also spawns walking corpses, as you can see there. Now, walking corpses themselves can only get up to level 2, so their usefulness is uh, questionable. Especially, like, feeding them XP and such. Not really uh, that great of an idea. Of course, I don't really have, like, much better things to level here, given that I only really have Malin. So it's like, I guess what we'll probably just do is just try and level him as best we can not really feed kills to the walking corpses if we can avoid it. Yeah, the archer's just gonna shoot our guy. Hopefully, no, there's no way Malin can die. He's going in for the walking corpse, who is in 20% defense water, so the likelihood he survives is minimal. <clears throat> Alright, they get another kill here. Wow, okay, double miss. Yeah, definitely getting the kill there. Let's see if we can't get this kill from Malin. Oh, that's a... Oh, I was gonna say that's a guaranteed death. I made a mistake, but he missed an 80% chance to hit, so... I guess not. Now here, if we take a look at this book... Oh, actually. I guess you, I guess you need to do it with your lord. I did ch test it with my lord uh, before this recording. And it was just like, fear leads to... Anger, anger leads to hate, hate leads, hate leads to whatever, and that's it. Nothing really happened. Um, so I think we'll just not touch it for now. So I want to get my lord up here. Maybe we can kill this guy. I don't know if we will. We do have green's help, though, although their forces are relatively weak. 
We'll get at least our archer up, though. We'll get our spearmen up. We only have four turns left to do this, so if we're going to do it, we got to do it very soon. He is recruiting a decent amount of units now. Still got three units on the board. It is daytime, but we're in the afternoon, and next turn it's going to be dusk. Yeah, there it is. Alright, so if we step on that village with Melon, what are the chances we die? Or is there a chance we die? 20, 6, 12, 18. Yes, there is a chance we die. If They'd have to hit everything, but there's a chance. There is a chance, and we do not want to take that chance. That would kind of be... <laughs> that would be awkward losing on the first scenario. Just because of something stupid. It does not look like we'll be killing this orcish leader, especially with green biting the dust and it coming upon night here. Ooh, wow, Spearman doing work. And it looks like they are going to kill that archer, okay. So I just have this poor walking corpse at, uh, like, no HP. Let's throw that in. Yeah, I don't want to send Malin in. He does not have much health, only 38, so I don't want to risk him dying. Yeah, and I lost that other spearman, and all my other walking corpses are dead. This one's about to be dead. I assume that guy will attack it. Yes, he will. Misses once, but gets the second hit. Oh, and the Lord coming out here. Green's definitely not going to focus the Lord. So the Lord will probably just go back in. Just gonna throw a bunch of uh, javelins here. Not really do too much. All right, so yeah, like I, I would really like to pop one of these guys with Malin, but um, actually, I may be able to do that. I can get him one XP more. And the leader generally always goes back to his keep. So, should not really be a risk. Yeah, there he goes. Yeah, he's just going to go for the easy kill there. That guy's going to go for our leader, but we can't die. So we could take two hits. We cannot take four hits, however. And next turn is turn 13, so this is our final turn. Um, I wonder if we could get him this kill. So this guy has 5 movement points. Forest costs 2. So he could go 1, 2, so he could get there. So realistically what I'm thinking here... Is we could move Melon here. Maybe we could get like 2 shots? Alright, 1 shot. Well, I was going to say we could go in here and try and sneak that kill. Only problem being, if we miss, we're just dead. So, we don't want to do that now that he's only hit one shot. So, we'll just pull Malin back and get ready to end the scenario. As we did not have to kill the leader, it was just an alternative objective. Alright, trade some bow shots here. Alright, we've returned from ransacking the Orcish camps, Drogon. It seems like we're just in time. More humans? We will need the chief if we are to fight them now. Grunts, retreat! By all rights, I should have executed you on the spot, Malin. I cannot believe you let that necromancer corrupt you. I suppose part of this is my fault, since I was the one who allowed him into Parthen. Nevertheless, uh, since I showed him mercy, I will show the same to you. You are hereby banished from Parthen. Fine words, Drogon. Would you have rather let the orcs overrun the town? Aye, better than that to even dabble in dark magic. People would have rebuilt the town just as they always have before. Even had I died, it would have at least been with dignity. Would the mages had taught you more sense? I only did it to protect those I care about. Is this really what I deserve for saving your hides? 
yes, yes it is. Nobody will support you on your path to depravity. We should all be glad to see you gone, Necromancer. I detest having fought by your side. Yeah, so this is where, hey, we don't come with you. Della, sister, it sickens me to be of the same blood as a Necromancer. Father would turn in his grave if he could see what you've become. Just leave. Be gone, Malin. I've no wish to see your face around here ever again. Yeah, so basically the same thing happens if you beat this scenario without spawning walking corpses. They all You basically just say, hey, I want to uh, go off and find a necromancer because we need his help. And everyone's like, no, no, we don't want to do it. And he's like, would you rather the orcs overrun the town? And they're like, yes, we can always rebuild. Basically the exact same thing they said. But instead of calling you like filth and saying like, get out of here, you necromancer. Oh, it sickens me to be the same bloodline as a necromancer. They're just like, oh you know, don't do this, Malin, we don't want you to fall into the, you know, to fall into darkness, etc., etc. But given this campaign name is Descent into Darkness, is it really a surprise um, at what's going to happen? So, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this first scenario. In two days, we are going to kick it off with the second scenario, so stay tuned for that. I hope you guys, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you guys are going to enjoy this campaign. This one will probably be um, a good deal more difficult than the last one. Obviously, not going to be incredibly difficult given it's only an intermediate level. But we're two levels up from rookie, um, and it's got more scenarios, some more character development allows us uh, more chance to continue to upgrade our roster. And as we get access to more undead units, this will become very a very very interesting campaign. So yeah, I would like to thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Cheers, guys.